Hello and welcome back to another Impact Review at the Impact Lounge. I'm your host Adam and as always I'm joined by Ro. Hi Ro, how are you? Yourself? Yeah, really good, really good. Uh, feeling back on form this week after recovering from uh, the dreaded man flu over here in the UK and uh, all our snow is gone and we're back to uh, full guns blazing over here. Also uh, to our listeners you might also notice hopefully the quality of these reviews is going to be slightly better, the sound quality. Finally got round by myself uh, one of these uh, professional podcasting mics so hopefully you'll see uh, some more content coming out of Roe and myself going forward as well as just these impact reviews. Uh, once again thanks for your comments last week um, we, we always really like to see them. Uh, there were some great comments there. Please keep on dropping us messages of things that you want us to talk about those kind of things and we'll do our best to answer them uh, before we get into this week's show we, we usually tell people make sure you subscribe to the channel if this is your first time stopping by uh, we are approaching the 4,000 subscriber mark we I know the the aim for the channel is to get there by uh, the pay-per-view we're slightly behind so we do need all of you to spread the word and if you're enjoying what we're doing here tell other fans about it and tell them to tune in um we usually do a few shout outs uh, have you got any this week you want to make ro uh just the same as usual usual um for another great podcast that does a tremendous job covering impact you want to check out the wrestling personified podcast and uh for our facebook users uh be sure to check out the uh, impact fan zone on facebook there's a lot of uh, great discussions about things all things impact and we've also got the Impact Lounge Facebook page now as well. So make sure you, you hit subscribe to that one as well. Google that. Um, yeah, so however you subscribe, just make sure you do tune in. And if any of you are looking for a shout out in the future, then obviously just drop Ro myself or, or BQ aligned with uh, what you're doing. And we'll take a listen and uh, give you our honest thoughts as well. So before we dive into this week's show, uh, what did you think of it you know, overall as a, as a televisual spectacle? It just it just felt like to me it was like a pay per view and that that's great. Like the one thing I can hope for and maybe this is something they can do down the road is, you know, since we're gonna have such a big gap of between the next pay per view, if you could have these kind of like special pay per view like shows, it kinda helps buy the time until we actually get the actual pay per view. But I thought it was uh, incredible overall. Absolutely. I I would one hundred percent agree with that. I th I think that the matches from top to bottom, all of them were excellent. And uh, I know we're going to dive into them in a moment. But uh, everything there felt like a pay-per-view. What, what I'd like to actually see, though, is if they're going to do this, where they have themed TV pay-per-views, that I wish they would do this as the first night of a taping. So so have the rest of the tapings leading up to the next one. Just so that there's that, I suppose, kind of excitement that you don't know what's going to happen at it. Uh, because I think a lot of these results, people are, are, know what's happening, you know, like Laurel leaving, etc. So it would be good if, if they kind of... Uh, built up to these kind of themed ones as the first show of a, of a set of tapings, just so that it can keep any hidden surprises for us. Um, all right, so, so let's dive into it. And, and as you quite rightly said, this really did feel like a pay-per-view and there was certainly less talky segments this week. It was mainly about the wrestling. I know we had a show like this a couple of weeks ago. I don't mind if they do this just on the on these themes episodes, but I, I thought last week's as a, a show, a progression, those kind of things was spot on. It's what I feel that the, the program should be about in between the specials. But but this this is quality. So let's let's dive into uh, the show. Let's break it down a little bit. All right. So we started off with with the two main eventers uh, entering the building earlier on in the day. Now I, I don't know what was going on here, but why were there some holiday makers waving American flags by behind Johnny Impact? I didn't get this, and it looked, it looked quite ridiculous, but can you explain that one to me at all, Ro? Not a clue in the world, man. <laughs> I, I don't know if they just tried to make him out to be some, some loony or something, I don't know, but everything he does just seems incredibly stupid. Um, and it's funny, but at the same time, it's sometimes it's just off-putting. Uh, I, I don't think this is how you should be building a baby face myself. But uh, there you go. There He was entering with guys waving flags behind him. Um, and then we went over to the team of Josh and Sanjay, who, once again, just want to reiterate, I think are doing a really, really good job of uh, anchoring the show uh, in front of their blue screen. Welcome us and give us a preview. Uh, what do you make of these two? Have they, have they grown on you? Yeah, they, I mean, you know, and I'm, I know I've stated before the commentary to me, it's, you know, I'm, 
I can uh, deal with, you know, some average commentary team. But, yeah, they've built chemistry, and that's what I'm just thinking in the future, like if they decide to, you know, change one of them. I, I really think you should just leave the both of them because the one thing, and I know uh, so it was in the comments in weeks past about there are some people that thought we were missing that heel commentator but i think with this group we're getting uh you know you get josh who kind of comes across as serious at times where sanjay you know he's cracking jokes bringing up a lot of pop culture references and i mean while still you know uh uh focusing on the match calling the moves and whatnot so i really like this uh pairing now they have grown on me he's actually reminded me a little bit of taz on commentary and, and, and the kind of things that he says except for the fact that He's coherent and he's likable. <laughs> Talking about Sanjay now, not the Taz. Um, but it, his style is very, very similar in the kind of comments that he makes and those kind of things. But I, I think he's excellent. The only thing I'm worried about is that they were saying how, you know, he's out with an injury at the moment. Those kind of things as if they're, they're building for him to return to the ring, which I hope they don't do. I hope they stick with this team because they're, they're doing some sterling work. Anyway, um, let's get on to the first proper match of the evening. Uh, it started off with the recap of the rivalry between LAX and the Cult of Lee. And uh, I thought this was quite a tidy little uh, promo package that they put together. It's, 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 it's amazing how quickly this feud has, has kind of culminated in this, this title match. Because it feels like Cult of Lee has only really formed as a tag team about three, four weeks ago. And I think it was, actually. But um, they seem like credible guys, don't they? And I thought this package was a nice way to start off the show. Yeah, they, you know, it's amazing because even though before we knew when they were the Cult of Lee, it was just kind of... You know, especially during Trevor Lee's uh, X Division title reign, we just kind of knew it as like it's, it's Trevor Lee and you know his lackeys. Which during that time, I mean, you had Caleb Conley, and I think they uh, had uh, Andrew Everett at one point. I'm I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, in in little time, they've made them you know credible ta uh, challengers, which I think was amazing. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about the cult of Lee here, and it's funny because the cult makes it sound like it should be bigger than it is. And as you said, Andrew Everett was in it. Well, he certainly wore black trunks and tagged with them. I'm guessing that means he was a member. But, um, yeah, they, they were talking about how Trevor Lee has brainwashed Caleb. And I don't I don't really see it as that. I just see him as someone who likes hanging around with him and, and, and is just, you know, associates with him, not as someone who's a brainwashed... Uh, henchman so to speak but no I, I this match by the way I, I just thought was incredible and for me it was the best match of the night I, I seriously Santana and Ortiz they are incredible in the ring or, or their, their chemistry the flow of the match everything about it they were absolutely incredible and I said it last week I'm going to say it again I think this is the best incarnation of LAX that we've had as in these guys are, are going to be stars both of them will be single stars in the future but at the moment that they are absolutely killing it week in week out in that ring you know, I thought about what you you had mentioned. You said we know somewhere down the road that they're going to eventually break these guys up. And it's like, damn, because this is, you know, one of the best tag teams that Impact's had in some time. I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, 10 years ago or anything, but just recently. I mean, I guess you could throw in the Wolves, too. Uh, I don't want to um, minimize what they've done. But, uh, uh, yeah, man, um, they're great, and this match is great. And what makes me happy is I kind of got the vibe that we're going to th – this feud's still going to continue. But the only concern is <clears> – <throat> excuse me – you know, you can only drag this feud out for so long. And, you know, hopefully they have some tag teams waiting, you know, whether it's, you know, they're bringing somebody in, they're pairing people together or some kind of makeshift tag team to challenge LAX. So then that way, you know, if LAX does drop the titles – you know, maybe we can get LAX, whether they, you know, do singles competition or if they just, ha you know, aren't challenging for the titles. That way they're not just always surrounded by the titles, if, if you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, what they're trying to do with OVE, basically. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, these two, uh, you, you brought up, you know, uh, the Wolves. Uh, you know, previously, we've had America's Most Wanted. You've had um, Beer Money, Bad Influence. Who else? You've had Motor City, Machine Guns. All of them fantastic teams. I actually think these two in the ring are up there with all of those guys. And if I, I would actually say that they may be even, you know, at the top of that list. At the moment, personality-wise, 
they still got room to grow. But let's not forget they're in the shadow of, of Conan to some extent. But uh, honestly, in the ring, man, they go. So there's there's our first question for our listeners this week. I mean, let's know what 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 do you think about LAX and this our incarnation of them? Where do you think they rank in the in the top ten of uh, tag teams in Impact TNA, whatever you want to call it? Where, where do you think they're near the top like I do, or or do you think they they maybe still got some way to go before we could talk about them in that same breath? Anyway. Uh, I be- Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were asking me. <laughs> no, no, no. I was asking our listeners, but of course we want to hear you as well, bro. So what, what do you think? Um, I do think they got ways to go because, see, like I, I think if you were talking about within the past five years, I'd put them up there with the Wolves. And I mean, I want to say Bad of Influence was still around. But when you're talking 10 years, I mean, you know, when you're talking about beer money and America's Most Wanted and Triple X was one. And, you know, those tag teams, I mean, yeah, they got ways to go. But, I mean, in due time, I think for right now what they've done, they've uh, made their mark in Impact Wrestling by far. But um, just, just just going to this this match, uh, I thought it was really good, really fun, fast-paced. Uh, both teams could have won it. You know, they didn't steamroller through the Cult of Lee, which is good, because you want this team to come back again. And I, and I don't know what goes on in the tapings. I haven't read the spoilers. I think I did at the time, but I can't remember if this is the end of Cult of Lee. I, I really hope not, because there's value in this team. But I think, as you said, they need to have more than just two tag teams at any one time, which is what they seem to have at the moment. They need to bring in, to mix it up, you know, and even maybe have a triple threat match somewhere down the line, bringing OVE back in it, or, or, or building some other tag teams of the, of the bit players on the roster. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, I, I thought it was excellent. LAX won by pin four. Um, I would have liked to have seen, I don't know, may, maybe some reason why this feud should continue. Because it, it doesn't seem to be a reason at the moment. It feels like that's it done. But I, I don't know where they go from here. Well, I mean, the only reason why I kind of thought maybe it'll continue, because you figure this is what really the second match that they've had. Because the first match, uh, Cotal Lee wins in... You know, they get the number one contendership, then the title match LAX retains. So I guess your third match, if you, you know, you build it up and make it be a big deal would be the rubber match because, you know, they're both one and one respectively. So, yeah, and there was a bit of interference at the end as well by Conan from memory, uh, which kind of helped get the win. But um, I, I, I really can't talk highly enough of this match. I loved it. Um it was, for me, the, sh- the, the match of the show. Anyway, moving on, um, we next had up uh, Mackenzie Mitchell uh, talking with Lashley, uh, who was down to partner with Eddie Edwards, but obviously Sammy Callahan took him out last week. It, some of you might have noticed something about it on the internet, you know, some, some, some maybe some chitter-chatter out there. But yes, yeah, so uh, Sammy Callahan looking re- uh, unrepentant, and we've got walking Armageddon saying that he's going to go out and shut up OVE for good. Uh, he... I, I'm not going to miss Lashley. <laughs> I'm going to say that right here, right off the bat. I just don't think that they've actually, since America's top team, that kind of fell apart too quickly for me. Um, they really should have really given that a bit more room to, to finish off properly. And ever since then, I really don't care about him that much. And, I, you know, we all know that he's he's looking to go and he's possibly going to be turning up in, in WWE. But at this point, I don't think he's got that much to offer. Well, you know, when you look at Lashley's time, you know, especially his second time with the company, because his first time was, I mean, I can't even remember myself, but, you know, the way that they've booked Lashley, they made him so dominant, man. And, you know, you look at, you know, he's been champion four times. And, you know, his matches, the cool thing that I always loved about his matches is as dominant as he, as he was or is, you know, it the other the other guy he was facing would get some offense in and you know you'd had some victories like you know you think about when Seidel beat him upset him and then you know Eddie Edwards for the title but yeah I think that America top team you know once that kind of ended you know prematurely it kind of just left them kind of like you know because I, I thought especially too that win uh that Moose got against him I was really curious to see where he was going next, but he seems like a guy that's on his way out and, you know, working with OVE and whomever else he's going to work with you know, to try to put them over. That's the proper way to do it. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah. So from that, you US viewers got the uh, the flashback of the week, which had Monty Brown taking on Christian. Uh, two of my favorite guys for, from Impact Past uh, or TNA Past. Monty Brown was, was such a good character and it was just a shame that, 
he went to WWE and I don't really know what happened to him. I, I know he fell away very, very quickly and kind of disappeared off the scene. Uh, do you know what's happened to him? Is it Does he still wrestle? Or? What happened with him is when he went over there, um, he had some personal issues. I think something where he ended up uh, having to take care of his uh, his nieces. Cause I think something with his sister might have uh, passed away or something. So that kind of ended his career. I will say this, and this is something if you guys follow me on Twitter, you probably see me uh, tweet this out from time to time. And I hate to sound like a broken record, but the only gripe I've ever held against this company is them dropping the ball against Monty Brown. What they did, that opportunity, if I don't know if you remember, but with the whole uh, Planet Jared crap, they had a golden opportunity to make this guy be the guy of the company, you know, next to AJ Styles. I think, no, this was even before AJ Styles. And they dropped the ball so bad with this guy. And watching this, you know, I was, you know, as happy as I was, and it was a good match, I remember it. I'm like, how do you miss on this guy? So I, that's just my only gripe with this company. They're usually good at uh, uh, realizing talent and, you know, pushing them to their full potential. But with this guy, man, they dropped the ball big. <laughs> I'm talking of uh, people who follow you on Twitter. Why don't you give a shout out to your Twitter handle there, Ro? Um, it's RT great, uh, underscore. There you go. There you go. You can, you're going to get a few more listeners now or a few more viewers <laughs> on Twitter. Right. Yeah. So I, I agree. Monty Brown was, was a great character. I, I can't, I can't remember the silly, uh, name that they gave him in WWE when he went right across there, but, uh, the pounce was a great finisher as well. I really enjoyed that. And, uh, it was, it was something that I'd actually like to see. Someone, well, I was going to say someone like Brian Cage, but he doesn't need that because he's got an awesome finisher. But well, Sienna, it, Sienna does it actually. It doesn't look that good though when she does it. I think <laughs> I, I think you do need to be, be a, basically a big dude to do it. So so maybe even someone like Tyrus could do it. Uh, you know, that would work. Except for I'm guessing you need a bit more explosive speed, and I don't think Tyrus has got that. Anyway, I, I think I think too. You know, last point, I think with that move, that it's a combination between the person and I think the person taking it because I've seen some people take it where they'll fly and almost hit the rope or you know there there's some people who take it you know it really it, it, it it's the person who takes it too just like <laughs> you can look at like the rock you know the rock when he would take the stunner how he would bounce to the ropes and stuff so. yeah I know what you mean yeah 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 so, so uh, well, talking to which, I think KM, there you go. KM would be ideally suited to that as a finisher. And uh, it's a shame we didn't actually get KM on, this, on the show this week, although he was referenced quite a bit uh, by the commentary team uh, talking about marriage and, and those kind of things. But anyway, um, moving on, we then had Alberto entering the building. Not really much to say about that. And then uh, backstage with uh, Matt Seidel, say he's bringing both titles as one because we're all one. Now, this, this, this promo... I like Seidel. He's grown on me. He absolutely grow, he's grown on me. And this is the best character he's been in quite some time. But but he is beginning to get a bit annoying. Uh, and this, this, this gimmick is is pushing my uh, my patience a little bit. And maybe that's a good thing because obviously he's a heel. He should be doing that. But I really hope they we, we find out who his spiritual advisor is sooner rather or later because I think we need to get there. Yeah, I think that's the point of it all. I mean, we, you know, I think sometimes we're designed to believe every time someone turns heel is them attacking a baby face or them, uh, you know, saying, you know, making comments, you know, negative comments to the crowd or the city that they're in. So this is kind of, you know, this is a different uh, turn for things where you got them just being just super annoying where, you know, fans will start, you know, booing the hell out of him because he still gets cheers. Mm. And even in this match, you know, I can still hear people cheering for him. But I think that's the goal. Now, I thought commentary did, once again, an excellent job here of building this match up uh, when, when it started. You know, they really put Ishimori over by, you know, saying that he's been uh, a junior GCH uh, champion and those kind of things. So, once again, I thought the, the commentary team did an excellent job here. The one thing I was slightly disappointed by, because I, I thought this was going to be potentially a match of the year contender. And it was good. It was really good. But I don't think it clicked as well as I thought it was going to be. Um, I don't know what your thoughts of this match. Um, I mean, first off, I just want to say, man, it, I'm happy that the way that they've done with Ishimori, especially putting the belt on him, because, you know, in the past when they've had certain partnerships, that was a thing where where they were you know, not utilizing the guys properly. And I mean, I know you can dig back. I know a popular one is uh, Okada. 
you know, I forgot he was with the company. And then Sonata, too, you know, they didn't use him right. So they did a tremendous job with Ishimori, and I'm proud of Impact for doing that. Um, as far as the match, you know, I it, it seemed just like a standard match to me at first until, you know, they started, you know, really kind of kick, clicking into the gears. And then that's when I was just like, OK, I, this is for the X Division Championship. And then, you know, I realized, too, it's a double double cha- uh, title match. Um, but no, nah, you know, what? It, it was great. I mean, I mean, I've seen you know better better i think they're when they were tagging and i i forgot who they had tagged against but when they had that tag team match a couple of weeks ago i thought that was better their chemistry was better so i mean this was fine i mean i don't know where they go from here i mean maybe you get a rematch but uh we'll have to see yeah uh the, the other thing i i thought was this one i didn't think the crowd were as into it as they could have been it was quite quiet at certain times and for the rest of the show it didn't seem quiet uh, every match seemed to have a really good, you know, the crowd getting into it. But for this one, it was a little bit quieter, which is surprising because these guys, you know, once again, you know, they really go in the ring. But anyway, um, Sadal comes out as the Sidel Sadal. I'm back to my Sadals again. Sidel came out as the winner, and uh, that was it. You know, you would have thought there'd be maybe a bit more of a speech at the end, you know, about spiritual advisor, those kind of things. But it just kind of stopped and cut away to, to an interview with Ali, which I, I found quite surprising. Yeah, that 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 was that's why you know even when I was uh, when I had tweeted about this, I think the biggest thing I was mentioning, you know, we'll get onto it is about Ali's match. But you know, I had kind of forgot this match, and I hell, I even forgot that Seidel was now X Division champion. Um, I don't know, maybe the positioning of where they put this match, I mean, is probably the reason why I might have forgot. But yeah, it, it, it was kind of weird. You would think. You know, with this whole spiritual advisor thing, we would have heard some kind of post-match promo talking about, you know, I now have the Grand and X Division Championship and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But I guess we'll have to see next week what happens. Yeah, absolutely. So then we went to Ali and she said she was going to dedicate the win to uh, Gail Kim if she wins. Uh, and we went straight into the match. And, and it's a bit of a shame, really, because I think they've kind of, well, this was all about Ali all along. If you'd never seen wrestling before, and this is the first time you're tuning into a wrestling show, you would have known that Ali was going to win this match just from the build-up because they really didn't treat Laurel Van Ness as a champion in this match, you know, in the build-up to it. It was all about Ali all the way through it. Uh, having said that, I thought the match was excellent. I really did. You know, I've said before, I think Laurel Van Ness is a really good in-ring performer. And I think she showed it again through some of her cells, especially the super kick at the end. She sold that like a champ. Um, the one thing is, I still think that Ali isn't that great in the ring. And she, she's a veteran in that ring. But I think sometimes she looks sloppy or her offense looks sloppy. Um, but overall, I thought it was a really good match. The crowd was in it. Laurel Van Ness really, really helped get this match over with the crowd, even helping getting the alley cheers going, those kind of things. And what a classy, classy performance and way to go out for, for Laurel. Because, you know, she knew she was leaving at this point. She knew she was dropping the title, but she made Ali look like a star in this. Hey, didn't I predict this? Remember when we did the end of the year review? We had all, you know, you, uh, BQ and myself, we were predicting who do we think was going to, take the belt off of LVN. I think I was the only one that might have said Allie. So, see, I'm one one for one so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got me I, on that I, one. I, I will say, I think your comment about, you know, this feud being, you know, with Allie being the focal point, that probably has in part to do with the fact that we knew LVN was leaving or, you know, the creative knew LVN was leaving. So you can't really put any emphasis on somebody that you know who's not going to be be there. And I mean, they, you know, they, they were just showing the history of, you know, what she went through with LVN and whatnot. You know, the one thing I don't know if you caught, I mean, in the the match was good. And, and I'm, I'm glad Ali finally recaptured the knockouts championship, which it, what I found odd, the um, commentary team, they were building this up like this was her first title win. Mm. And I mean, I know her, her original one, you know, a couple of years ago, it, you know, it was short lived. You know, she ended up, you know, literally laying down for Maria, for Maria to capture it. But I, that's what I thought weird. And two, I thought this match should have been the match before the main event. I felt like they could have made this more of a bigger deal than I mean, they, they did a decent decent time in decent build up with this but i thought this match should have went before the main event i you know because this was a big moment for ali 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I agree. Uh, yeah. And it was title match back to back and title wins back to back. It kind of devalued the Seidel win as well. Uh, you know, they, th- they should have had a break, you know, maybe switch the the uh, Sammy Callahan OVE match, you know, in between this and, and then the main event. But um, yeah, so just, just I want to touch on the, the sloppiness. There was a few times in there. And as I said, I think it's something that they've got to work on. But there was some really nice stuff in there that Laurel did, like the Unpretty on the outside was good. I really like the way that they are doing slow-mos and action replays during the matches. I, I think they're getting the balance of it right now. But there was one move in particular. I think it was when uh, Laura was sat on the chair and she did like a running forearm or something like that. There's a, there was a few moves that she does and it doesn't look like she's actually connecting with any of them. Uh, and it's even more noticeable when we talk about Johnny Impact later on, some of his moves just blatantly missing. But um, I think that Ali still isn't the finished article. You know, I was talking about LAX earlier on saying that these guys, they're awesome. Ali, great character, great storyline, great year, year and a half build to get to this point. I think they've done everything right, but I still think that she has got more that she can give and, and, and will come better, will come better. Anyway, mm-hmm. after that, they um, they went backstage with Gail Kim. What did, what did you make of that? I think that's an interesting point that, that, that maybe our, our listeners will want to talk about. Um, I mean, it, it looks like, you know, and I'm sure, you know, off script, you know, their their relationship, they have a good relationship and she might look to look up to Gail Kim, but it's nice to see Gail around. I think she's part of the creative as it pertains to the knockouts. So, you know, a lot of this might have her fingerprints on it. So it's a nice interaction though. I'm sure it does have it, but to me, it just seems once again, taking away from that alley moment. And I know that it was part of the storyline they built it in there, but it just feels like Gail Kim is once again, maybe taking away something from the person who should be the one who's got the limelight on her, if you see what I mean. Um, I, I do I do think, though, sorry, I just want to throw this in. I do think if they really wanted in, you know, Ali's title run is it's a big deal, but if they really wanted to make it a big deal, they should have had Ali defeat Gail Kim for the Knockouts Championship. I had a, I remember I said, you know, after Bound for Glory, I said at these tapings, you know, they should dub it, you know, a big match, have it main event. I said, you would really make Ali, you know, you could really put Ali over big if she defeats, defeats Gail Kim. But then, you know, we had Gail Kim, uh, you know, drop the belt and, you know, they had the little tournament and whatnot. But I could see where you're coming from. Like, you feel like her her, uh, her being on TV, I mean, her sh- them showing her backstage, it kind of took away from Ali's win. Even if you would have had Ali maybe if she was talking to Gail and they didn't show Gail on camera, maybe it'd be different. But the fact that they showed her, maybe it took away from Ali's win. Yeah. Maybe, as you said, that they might have that Ali Gail Kim program at Bound for Glory, you know, and that it's mentor versus, you know, in her comeback fight or something like that. Maybe they'll do that. Maybe that's where they're, they're laying the seeds, but who knows? Let us know what you think anyway. And that's not you wrote, that's our listeners. Drop us some comments and uh, tell us what you think. All right. Um, we're over to, Mackenzie talking with Austin Aries backstage. Uh, my only comment about this segment is Austin Aries' beard is ridiculous. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, <laughs> over to you, Ro. What, what, any comments on this? You know, these promos between this one and then I think the one, I don't know if, we, if this was before or we're going to get to this one, but the promo between this and then the one that Johnny Impact had, it, it's just, man, it would just make you think like, we're going to see something, something's going to have this impact's going to do something like he's, he's desperate, you know, now because, you know, Aries has brought up, you know, how this guy's challenging, you know, and been unsuccessful. And, you know, he's talking about how he's here to bring, make impact, you know, take it back to how it is. And the only way he can do that is he's champion, but it's just these promos. And I feel like the way that they're done, they've been done. It would just have you believe that we're going to see a change in attitude with Johnny impact. And we'll get into the match, but I, I think that's just what I've been taking away from him. Yeah, I think you're quite right. You know, you was basically saying that, you know, if it's the usual Johnny turning up, you're not going to win it. And uh, guess who turned up? The usual Johnny impact. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Mackenzie looked stunning in all the promos tonight, by the way. Just wanted to throw that in there as my uh, misogynistic viewpoint, which uh, I don't air very often. Right. OK. Interview with Sammy Callahan about Eddie Edwards next. Um 
I think that they've done great with this, you know, because we all know it was an accident and he didn't want to do it and he was probably feel shit about it. But they, they've they built, you know, something out of this. They've built, built a, a human interest story, you know, something that a real situation into into a shoot. So I, I quite like what they're doing with this. Yeah, this is another few they they fell into. I mean, <laughs> and surprisingly, it has to do with OVE. I mean, well, I, you know, this case, Sammy Callahan, but... You know, they might have something special on their hands. You know, it's crazy to think that this accident, you know, they could have easily just like, all right, let's just do away with it. But now they're building onto it. So this is a feud I'm looking forward to. Are we predicting a baseball bat on a pole match? I I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sucker for on a pole match. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a, a hardcore match that comes out of it with these two. Uh, something like, you know, um, was it Lethal Lockdown with all the weapons or something like that? Maybe something along those lines, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, um, I don't mind them playing up on it. I, I think they'd be foolish not to because it's got a lot of internet uh, buzz, has not it? You know, a lot of people are talking about this, whereas I, I would imagine if that spot would have gone as planned, it would have been a spot lost forever, wouldn't it? You know, no one would be talking about it this week. Yeah, it'd be probably, I mean, as critical as people have been, and which is fair, because, you know, like we had spoke about it, you know, a spot like that, you like to see them do less than just because the room for error, I mean, is just so small. But, you know, they were just so critical, like, oh, how, you know, how how can you be promoting this? And that, it, I mean, like I've always stated, you know, folks who don't like it, Impact or the their uh, most harsh critics, anything they do, they're going to harp on. You know, whether it's positive or negative, if it's something positive, they're going to find the negative in it. If it's something negative, they're really going to zero in on it. So, um, but yeah, I, I, it's funny, you know, and unfortunate that the accident is what kind of brought the intrigue to all of this. Yeah. So, so moving on to the actual match then. So it was OVE with, with Sammy uh, against Lashley because obviously Eddie Edwards isn't there because he's got his uh, orbital bone busted up by the baseball bat. So, uh the match itself was okay. I thought it was it was fairly decent for a handicap match. Um, Dave is um, well, Dave Chris, sorry, I should say Dave Chris is still an absolute charisma black hole, isn't he? He sucks. <laughs> honestly, honestly, it really is. Is there's a vacuum there where there used to be a personality? It's a shame because they're good in the ring these two. And then on the flip side of that, you got Jake who. It's so OTT. It's like he's um, in a pantomime, you know, playing a villain, twirling his moustache. He's so over the top with his things. But between the two of them, it kind of works. And, and, and once again, I enjoyed this uh, as far as it went, you know, even with the sudden Brian Cage entrance. I, I thought it was actually not a bad filler match. And that's all this was, really. Let's face it. It was filler. Yeah. And what I like, too, is because, like you said, when, when I saw this, I was like, the way that this match should go, since OVE has the numbers, and I mean, we all know how dominant Lashley is. I mean, Lashley's going to get his fair share in, but OVE should dominate this match. And for the most part, the numbers game, they were able to utilize the numbers game because we even seen Callahan, you know, using the bat, which at first I'm like, <laughs> they really thought to bring the bat back after last week. You know, it didn't take a week hiatus, but that's here nor there. But, you know, we saw the number game, numbers game catch up with Lashley and then until we, then we get Brian Cage coming in and just destroying and uh, you know the post match was when Lashley well they got the win obviously but when Lashley extended his hand for a handshake uh, Cage just looked at him and walked away so I, don't, I, I mean do you think it's too early for these two to be feuding or do you think it's fine I mean given that we know Lashley will be departing soon yeah I, 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 is that where it's going I don't know you know and as I said I'm not trying to uh, pretend I haven't read spoilers. I genuinely can't remember if that's where it's heading, but I can't see these two feuding, especially if, you know, what, what's he got? Maybe two, three weeks left in, in the company, possibly. Um, I can't see they can build a feud and a payoff in that time. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, who knows? I would act, I would love to see it. I'd love to see the cage be the guy to rid uh, the world of Lashley from impact, because I think that's, uh, you know, a real sign of approval, you know, uh, a handing of the torch, so to speak. But I, I don't think that's where this is going to go. I think it's going to be, um, I think Cage was just put in there because he was brought in to basically run through jobbers, basically. And because of the Eddie Edwards thing, they thought, well, we need someone to go into this spot. Let's put, let's put him in there. So I, I just think he's there as filler for Eddie Edwards while he recovers myself. 
Yeah, because I, I the, the one thing I think, because, you know, I had been talking about, I wouldn't mind them giving him the old Goldberg push where you just have him run through people. But I think if you have him face Lashley and just say uh, he goes over Lashley, that would then technically put him in title contention. Because we, we've seen this in wrestling where, you know, you face a certain tier of wrestlers and you reach a certain point, whether it's the mid card or the uh, world title division where, hey, I'm in line for a title shot. So it's just like if you if you rush the program with Lashley, then, you know, essentially that's what you're talking about. And I think it's probably too early for him right now. I think we can agree on that to be challenging for a title. But then, too, it's like if you want to do the feud, you better hurry up and do it because you know he's not going to be here anymore. So we'll just have to wait and see in the next coming weeks. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it will be interesting to see where they go with it. But I don't really see this being a long term story. Event. I think it's just a, a, a convenience thing while Eddie Edwards is out. Anyway, um, yeah, the one thing I will say is obviously these two guys are monsters, Lashley and Cage. Uh, but, you know, I still go back to an established tag team who are brothers who have been fighting for the last 15 years together should still beat two single wrestlers. Uh, and I know it wasn't built like a traditional tag match because, you know, Cage came in and just decimated everyone for 30 seconds. Uh, but if this had been a tag match, I still would have preferred to see the Chris Brothers go over. Right, OK. Um, we ha then went on to a backstage with Mackenzie talking to Johnny Impact. Oh, dear Lord. He is terrible. This promo was... Uh, you know, I, I love the show. And I try not to be negative about things, but he is terrible. This this promo was dreadful. That's all I'm going to say. I, I just think it was awful. He he has to turn. I think he, he's going to find his calling as a heel soon because that was the thing. Like, I got what they were trying to get because I think the way that Impact has presented Johnny Impact, they made him seem like a big deal. But, uh, you know, giving him a mic and, it, and I, and I, and I remember with his heel work, you know, his heel work on the mic was, you know, far superior, obviously. But I think just him as the, you know, a baby face cutting these promos, man, it just, you know, they feel so forced. But what he was saying in this particular one, I, it, it had me as a viewer feeling like, man, you know, he's going to do anything he can to, to win this match. So that's when I was kind of thinking, I'm like, man, maybe we will see a heel turn. But yeah, man. <laughs> It was rough. Tough. It was rough. And the thing about it was that I quite liked what he was trying to say, but it's just the delivery of it. It was almost like, wait there, there's a there's a whiteboard off camera here, and I can see there's four points I've got to make. And, <laughs> and it was like he was trying to process, okay, I've made my first point, what's the next? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got to say this now. And then it was like taking breaks in it, and, and it just felt so unnatural. It really took me out of the spot. Do you know what? I, I rag on this guy every week, and, and it's really unfair because I actually like him. I think he's a brilliant addition to the roster. I just don't think his character's working at the moment. And uh, I get, we're going to come on to the match now, but, you know, I, I talk about it every week, his offence. Everyone rave, well, the commentators rave about it, which is what they're supposed to do. But to me, it, it, it just doesn't look right. It looks like a dance and it looks like it's the kind of thing I could brush off if you did it on me after moves. Anyway, let's get into the match. Um, we had Aries coming down um, with, with all the belts. Uh, I, I like the fact that they're promoting all the other uh, belts. I, I think that's a good thing that they do. And of course, he appeared on Ring of Honor this week as well, which there's a, a couple of videos about on the channel if you want to watch those. Um I like the gimmick, but do you know what? I'm not liking Austin Aries in this run. I, I, I don't know what it is, but I don't like him as a person at, at this point. And, and it's a strange thing because I, I was always a huge Aries fan in his previous runs. But at the moment, I'm just not digging him. Maybe it's because he, he beat Eli, who was absent from the show, I might add. Um, but I don't know. I'm just not buying into him. I think the only problem that I could see some people having is... Here's a guy that he came from another company where he wasn't being utilized well, you know, and they bring him over and they give him this push. And in a sense, it's like you couldn't do this with Eli. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying so much with the belt collector, but you think about how much they've uh, made Aries come across as being the guy of Impact Wrestling. And it's like we had Eli Drake, who was somebody that we built up. You know, and I know Austin Aries has been with the company before, but I think that's the thing. But, I mean, with that said, I mean, he's starting to grow on me as well because I do think the the long-term goal is whomever beats him for the belt, they're really going to get a big rub because all this, you know, this 
um, the plebis, plebis, ah, I tongue tied. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but that he st- yeah, what he's starting to starting to garnish. Like I, I don't know if you heard, but uh, most recently, and I'm sure by the time once this releases, a lot of you will be aware. And also, BQ did a video on this, so check it out. Um, about him appearing on the Ring of Honor show with the um, Impact Championship. Now they didn't uh, an- uh, announce on the the um, show that you know he was Impact Champion. They just said it's Austin Aries, and he actually challenged, I believe, Kenny King for the. Uh, television championship that's correct which was yeah. another thing too people were talking yeah what people were talking about like wow he's a world champion uh, a challenger for a television championship that makes the impact uh, championship uh look look uh doesn't make it seem like it's up to par but then i said you know maybe austin aries doesn't think the ring of honor <laughs> world championships up to par and i'm like you know you can always flip the narrative but anyways uh back to this um like I said, I don't have too much of a problem with him. You know, he's been delivering in the ring, and I thought this match, you know, it it was great. It was great. I would have liked to see more desperation off of Johnny Impact from Johnny Impact. Like, I feel like this was a perfect opportunity. If you want to do a slow heel turn, you could do some kind of elements where you, maybe you have him grabbing the tights. You know, he removes it, the turnbuckle, something like that, because... With this loss, is it, it just really seemed no different than any of the, his other title losses? Couldn't couldn't agree more. I think you've hit the nail on the head that we we needed to see something different from Impact in this match because he just can't win it as Johnny Impact. He, he's got to go and do something else, hasn't he? So um, the the one thing and uh, last week. I talked about go back and watch KM as the minister and his facial expressions. That was my, you know, flashback of the week that told you all to go and listen. This week, I want you all as viewers to go back and watch this match and watch the standing moonsault that Johnny Impact hits. Uh, one of the funniest things I've seen all week because the commentators sold it like a boss. They really did. But he didn't hit anything. He hit the mat. <laughs> he, d- he didn't actually land on Aries. It was weird. And they did a replay of it, which just I found was, was, was a, brilliant that they replayed a spot that he completely missed. But anyway, um, that's my problem with, 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 with Impact is that he does all these moves and they look fantastic. But, but they just, you know, like that spinning leg thing that he does from about one foot off the ground. I mean, it, it would hurt more just to kick someone normally. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it would, you know, because by the time you do all the flippy shit, uh, sorry, I should, maybe I shouldn't describe it as flippy shit, but it is flippy shit. It, you know, it takes, it looks good, but it's not actually achieving anything. Um, the one move that he did do was the, the kind of the double flip reverse brain bust. Spanish fly. <laughs> is that what yeah. it's called? Is it? Yeah. Spanish fly. Yeah. That was, that was excellent. And it looked brilliant in slow-mo as well. Uh, but, but overall, I mean, it was a good match. It, it, once again, it was pay-per-view quality. It started off slowly, but it built and built and built. Uh, but it was a good way to finish. And, and you know what? Uh, we've talked about Aries, what he's doing. I think Johnny Impact needs to move away from the main event scene now. Go and do something else, whether it's X Division or whatever it may be. Um, I'm actually looking forward to seeing Alberto versus Aries, which is where it looks like it's going. Well, but I mean, then too, you could say the same thing for him because, and that's what we had talked about, what they're going to need to do is start integrating new people into the main event scene because what is it going to be? Now, if Aries goes through uh, Al Patron, is he going to face Eli again? And then it just kind of just, it's a, you know, it's a cycle. So they're going to need to start adding some new people, even if you have some one-off match where, and I'm just throwing somebody out there. But just say if you had Braxton Sutter, you know, you do a little two week thing and you have him challenge. And, you know, even though you, you might not buy him as a contender, it gives something it's something new instead of us seeing the same people. Because we've seen this cycle. It's no different than when Eli was champion. He's facing Johnny Impact. Then uh, when Eli's case, it was El Patron and it was a lot of triple threat matches, you know, or, you know, get Moose involved. Like there's other people now they need to get involved that way. That can make a rain good as well. You know, the people you face. So, but yeah, we'll see. I, I think that whatever happens with the next title match, which we're assuming is going to be Aries versus Patron, um, I don't mind who wins that. I, and I can, I could argue a booking decision for both because I think Alberto has actually been very good as a heel. And I think that he would carry the belt and make it look important, which you know, at times Eli and that whole program between the three of them, it never felt that important. And I think Alberto as a heel champ could do that. But I also think that I don't really want to see Aries lose it so quickly because it, you know, when you have a short title reign 
it devalues it as well. So either way they go, I'm quite happy with it. But I think, I actually think it will be an excellent feud, the two of them. Um, because the problem with this one that's just, just happened of, of Ares and, and Jolly Impact is that they're both faces. Um, and, and I know Austin has played that kind of tweener role a little bit more, but ultimately they're both crowd favourites of the, you know, the crowd cheer. So I think Austin Aries does need a heel to, to go up against to not legitimise the title reign, but just to make it interesting, make that main event seem interesting. Yeah, uh, and you know, and I don't know if you heard, you know, the news with El Patron. They said he was back at the uh, headquarters up in Connecticut. So there's, you know, some rumors circulating that he might be wanting to resign with uh, the company. So you know, if I'm Impact and if he wants to go, and I, I was talking to BQ about this because he's saying, you know, they need top hills, which I agree, but. If this guy, if this is something, they need people who want to stay in Impact. If somebody wants to leave, I mean, you know, you let them leave, but that's not TV time they need to devote to somebody who's already kind of made it, you know, known like, hey, I have aspirations to go over there. You know, I would rather them give that spot to somebody who's going to stick around. So even though we're going to get this program with El Patron, it might be something that's short, you know, assuming that he does depart the company. I, I don't think he'll go back there. I really don't. And I, I know there was rumors that he was he was backstage. I think there was something that some explanation for it. But um, I, I don't think it will happen. I really don't, especially with Paige still being there as well. I think that, that that's a further complication. I just don't see it. I, I think he's happy at Impact. And, you know, he's been a good company man. He, you know, he's turned up at all these the Border City wrestling shows and those kind of things. He's defended belts. And I, I think he's actually been genuinely all right with Impact. You know, he's treated them with respect. He's, he's been very pro the company. So, uh, you know, I, I think he'll stick around for a bit longer. I really do. I don't think he'll go to, to WWE. I, I know there's all these rumours, but I just don't think it will happen. I'd, I'd like to see him as a champ. I think where they've missed the trick is that maybe he should have joined LAX in the low-key role. Uh, I think that would have been, made sense to me um, if, if you'd have joined that kind of stable. Because I, I know they teased it, didn't they, before? And I, I think if you're going to have a heel champ, I don't think it really works if you have a heel champ by himself. If, if that makes sense. I think he has to have an entourage around him. Because, mm -hmm. you know, heel champs are there to cheat and those kind of things. And if you're by yourself, it's hard to do those kind of things. So, well, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. But, um, yeah, overall, another fantastic episode of Impact. I felt really, really good. Really pleased with what they're doing. And, uh, yeah, can't fault it. Next week has got um, Feast of Fired. You're going to do us a, a bit of a rundown? is Because they did it at the end, didn't they? They did a rundown. but Yeah, the, um, that was all they really advertised, which... Uh... I find that to be interesting because I do think, and this is just uh, a bold prediction, I think whomever wins the uh, world championship briefcase, I think they're going to uh, cash it in at the pay-per-view, the redemption pay-per-view. That's my bold prediction. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, we don't really see that that very often, do we, in Impact? Because of all the tapings, it doesn't really work out that way. It seems much more legit, you know, I'm letting people know beforehand. I can't remember like a Money in the Bank, you know, ring the bell now after a match kind of thing. But oh, we'll see. Um, um, makes sense. Does that mean whoever wins it you think is going to take the title? Um, I, I, yeah, that, that's what I'm, what, what I'm calling. I mean, this is, and obviously it would have to be a hill, but I, I believe what's going to happen is whomever wins it when they have the uh, pay-per-view in April after the match between Austin Aries and, well, let's just say right now he's going to defend against, uh, El Patron. Whoever wins, I could see the, uh, winner coming down and, you know, and taking, taking the belt like that. Does it have to be a heel? Because you could effectively have had El Patron beat Ares and then lose the title straight away. So uh, so it could be, well, I suppose it's not really a babyface move is to do that. But you could get someone, you know, one of these uh, tweener kind of characters, you know, someone like an Eli Drake, you know, who the crowd really love, let's face it, and does heelish things, but it is really more of a babyface, isn't he? By the way, that's he, not a spoiler. I don't know who wins. <laughs> you know what? He would, he would be, you know what? And I mean, I guess, you know, right now, because... I thought that promo that they had for him a week ago was good. It just showed, you know, showed that they still got big plans for him. But he would be the ideal candidate. I, although I know it'd probably be similar to like Edge when Edge cashed in, but uh, it works for Eli. But I, I do think though with Eli, they're gonna get to a point where he's gonna become babyface, not because they turn him, but because of the fans. I mean, the fans are just so into him. So, but yeah, that, that's just my bold prediction. 
I think for for that that box or that briefcase or whatever you want to call it, I think it's it's going to have to be either Eli or Moose or I can't. Everyone else seems tied up in a program at the moment. They're the only two, or even Johnny Impact. Uh, he's another possibility, of course. You know that could be his next title shot. You know, um, and that could be his heel turn. So I think it's going to be between one of those three winning it personally. Uh, I don't even know who's in the match. I'm guessing those three are in the match. Uh, we haven't heard a lot of Moose recently. And don't forget about the pink slip. That's always the, the exciting one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'd like to see? It, it would be nice one year to actually not have a genuine idea of, of, of who we know who's going to be getting it. Because I think it will become quite apparent when you see who gets the briefcases, who's getting it. Uh, but it would be nice one year not to know. You know, and it'd be a genuine surprise. And of course, you know, the guy will come back, etc. But um, uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be nice. But anyway, uh, I always enjoy Feast uh, Feast of Fired. Fired of Feast? No, Feast of Fired. Yeah, Feast of Fired. Always uh, usually a fun show. And um, yeah, uh, last time, last few times they've done it, uh, it's been a bit over dramatic how they've opened the briefcase where they've all been sat in a room and they've done it one by one. Uh, hopefully they'll do something a bit more creative with it this time. But uh, yeah, a any final thoughts before we finish up for the week? No, just another great show, man. I mean, I mean, it sounds like a broken record, man. But uh, you know, when we're doing these uh, reviews, but the television's just been incredible, man, and it's becoming must see TV. And I mean, I know we're gonna be doing, doing not to be negative, but we're gonna probably have a down show in the next coming weeks. But what they've been doing now, man, it's just it's been excellent. And I think as a fan, man. You know, we're excited and, and there's a room for optimism that Impact's going to get back to where it want, once – well, I don't want to say so much once was, but it's going to get back into a standing where the view for, of the public is going to be better than what it is now. Absolutely. Uh, and on that very positive thought, I think we should call it a halt today. Thanks for your time, Ro, and listeners, make sure to hit that subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, we'll catch you next week. All right. Take care, everybody.